pair texts are everything around a text itself. The titles, annotations, cross-references, and artwork. Because they're so common, if we view them as the sort of incidental extras, when actually the fact that they are always there means that they are constantly changing the way we read and understand the text itself. A good way to th think about paratext is to compare it to walking around a city. There are signs and signals in the built environment that help you to navigate it, to find your way to move from point A to point B. Paratexts are similar. They help you to find your way in the book, to understand what's happening on that page, to connect it to other parts of the story. And so I view paratexts as the sort of signposts for what the book wants us to do with it and the larger conversation it wants us to have outside of itself. We're interested to understand how literature and artwork and manuscripts as a specific example of that um, instill knowledge and understanding. What happens in the mind when you engage a literary work in a particular material context? And these are questions that I can't answer with the tools of my own discipline, which is why for this project we have to partner with cognitive scientists and curators and philosophers to answer questions that we can't, you know, understand on our own. Okay, I'm Asma Hilary. Alejandro Baena Rivera. My name is Francis Watson. My name is Elvira Martin Contreras. I'm Jennifer Knust. Kelsey Rodenbiker. I'm Martin Fischer. Matthew Keegan. Nicola Bayetta. My name is Stefan Schroescher. Steven Carlson. My name is Jonathan Zecker. Sinead McCartan. I am Dr. Jill Uncle, curator of Western collections here at the Chester Beatty Museum in Dublin. The Chester Beatty collection includes uh, manuscripts that are uh, representative of uh, a number of faiths. The most popular faiths are, are sort of religions of the book. So you'll have the Hebrew Bible, the Christian Bible, the Quran, um, there are Buddhist texts. So it's not just that the faith was sort of written down originally, but there's also constant commentary on what these texts mean and how they should be used and practiced. People writing in the margins about how they're reading them and when they're reading them. That all gives us a sort of a nicer, broader image of how these faiths were practiced, you know, in the past and how that reflects how it's practiced today. I've always been interested in arts and uh, uh, the cognitive psychology behind arts, so I had projects studying poetry and so on. I find this project uh, almost like a continuation of, of my previous research in this regard. My name is Christoph Schepers. I am a senior lecturer in psychology at the University of Glasgow. So the paratext experts from philology have a lot of expertise in the, um, in the culture, in the cultural traditions behind uh, uh, paratext and uh, manuscripts, as well as the history, right? Um, but the psychological effects that uh, these various forms of paratext have, have not been illuminated yet. And I think one needs psychology to do that. What's really quite interesting about this project is that the subgrantees are looking at that sort of breadth. So it's not just focused on one particular faith, but in fact looking at manuscripts across different faiths. So what we can get hopefully from that at the end is sort of a comparison and contrast, you know, what these faiths ha have in their books that really are similar and what are different. Like everything else we do in life, reading is a multi-sensory experience. The things that in, uh, shape of any book you pick up mean that every time you pick up a different copy of the same story, you might encounter it in a different way. We cannot test ancient readers, but we, in the uh, comparison between cultures, we can get a hint of what is universal and what is more specific to the specific tradition. A, a new way that we're going about to understand that question is by doing empirical studies using eye tracking techniques and surveys and a whole, a whole range of uh, approaches to understand how modern people understand some of these features. This project can teach us that the human experience is something that's always contextualized. I mean, the nice thing about working with artworks and manuscripts specifically is that by definition art is highly replete, which means it is full of information that can never be fully tapped. I mean, one exciting thing about manuscript studies is new approaches, 
to these artifacts lead to new questions and it's this iterative process where the pursuit of knowledge and understanding related to these artifacts never ends. Mm -hmm.